Welcome back, I hope you are well. Today I am going to be filming a video showing you how I go out and about and navigate the streets, how I deal with camber. It's one of the most popular questions that I get asked, so what better time to show you than now? So make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and let's get on with the video. But ladies and gentlemen, before we set off, Make sure you are sitting correctly in your wheelchair, bum all the way to the back of the seat, feet properly positioned on your foot plate. Also, consider wearing gloves. Cycling gloves are great for the warmer weather. They help protect your hands and add grip. In the autumn and the spring, I use thicker, waterproof cycling gloves. In the winter, I use skiing gloves. These are fantastic for the colder months because they're insulated and waterproof. Okay, so this is my route round to the shops. It's like a round trip, so I know this like the back of my hand. Now, this part of the journey is slightly downhill. So this is the good times where we need to conserve our energy as much as possible. As you can see, this pavement here is very bumpy, it's very uneven, and also there are cambers that I have to deal with. Coming up here, we've got a cut curve where there's a driveway, so we've got another camber. So I'm gonna go off into the road if I don't compensate. Now this road is a dead end, so it's a very, very quiet road. The road is a lot smoother than the pavement, so I find that going into the road is actually a lot easier and conserves a lot more energy. Back on the pavement now, just to show you, here we've got camber again that I'm having to fight against. Not only that, I've got more cut curbs to deal with, with all the vibrations and everything, and then trying to get up here where there's a little bit of a slope. So I'm actually gonna bail out of that and go back onto the road and conserve this precious energy I have. Coming up to the next leg of the journey now, and I can see ahead of me, I've got a little slope to contend with. Now, when I'm going up a little slope, I wanna lean my body weight forwards to give me that momentum, and I want to build up a bit of speed. This is something wheelchair users have always got to do, is look ahead. So here we go, I'm committed, and up we go. So we're onto the next leg of the journey, and as you can see behind me, it looks uh, relatively smooth, but what a non-disabled person probably wouldn't even realize is this is slightly uphill, and we have a slight camber where it goes down uh, ever so slightly. The camber is relatively shallow, but you can see as I'm pushing, if I don't overcompensate, I'll go off into the grass bed. The dog then. <laughs> <laughs> so I am using this hand to do a lot more of the work. But can you notice where I'm positioned on the pavement? I'm positioned at the top of the camber rather than at the bottom of the camber. That's because... There's dog poo down there, that's why. <laughs> yeah. There probably is lots of dog poo. poo and mulch and yuck. And we've only got a little bit of leeway. And then I'm Cyclist. into the grass verge. I'm at the top of the camber here, which I feel to be a bit more comfortable than at the bottom. <laughs> I forgot how much hard work it was because I always go out in my batik. Coming up here, ever so slightly uphill, but it does take a lot more effort than if you were walking. We've also got bobbles on the pavement down here for people who are visually impaired or uh, blind. These are going to cause vibrations. If you've got small casters, they could get caught. So it's obviously worth bearing in mind that you've got this uneven ground. You could do a wheelie or my chair can quite happily contend with it and I can just deal with it. <laughs> This is a bit busier, this uh, leg of the journey, and this is my most hated leg of the journey because this sidewalk or pavement is really uneven and it's, um, what would you say, gravelly texture? The texture yeah, of it. it's rough texture, isn't it? It's got a really rough texture. So that causes fatigue with the vibrations up through my body and it also causes resistance so it's harder to push. Not only that, the shape of this pavement kind of goes like this, up, 
and then down. So where I position myself for the easiest way is up with one wheel either side of the hump. That way I'm not falling off and having to counterbalance with the camber. But can you see how I've positioned myself up on the hill like, or the slope, like I was telling you about? And I'm very sort of stable here. Whereas if I was positioned down here, can you see now I'm at a slight angle and if I was to push, we would go off. But if I go back and we go up to that sweet spot, let's call it, I'm just gonna go straight. So what's really, really uh, adds even more difficulty to this um, part of the journey is it's slightly uphill as well. Not that everything seems to be slightly uphill. Doesn't it? <laughs> On the way back, it's downhill. <laughs> Here we've got another bit where I can look ahead for. We've got a bit of uneven ground here where the pavement has changed from a driveway to the pavement. So obviously I'm going to pick this line and it's a lot smoother. Oh, that's, that's one thing you've got to contend with, Gem, isn't it? You really don't want to be rolling into that. Look, <laughs> that's not poo, that's just mud, but if there was poo on my wheels, it would be on my hands. You'd cry. <laughs> hey, did anyone play a game when they were little where if you stepped on a double drain like this, it was lucky, but single drains like that one up there Hold are me. unlucky? I still do it. And here we go, a bit more camber. So I'm coming up to the top of the camber where I find it a lot easier. Now look at all this, we've got loose gravel, we've got uneven ground, and can you see how it dips here? This is for people's driveways, but then you've got to like go up and down the dips. So you can understand how this very short walk to some people might become a long marathon to someone in a wheelchair. And this is why we get pretty exhausted. that I'm mindful of when I'm wheeling along is giving little gentle pushes and kind of letting my wheelchair go where it wants to go. So if my wheelchair feels like it wants to sort of glide for a little bit in one direction, instead of fighting it in the other direction, I'll just let it glide that way. And that way I'm kind of conserving a little bit of energy as well. I got Shauno giving me a little bit of a push so I can carry on filming the rest of this video for you. <laughs> Make sure to check out how to push a manual wheelchair where we give all of our top tips and advice with good old Shauno. <laughs> okay, this is actually the worst part of the journey because we've got a bit of a slope. To me, it feels a bit like a mountain, but I've got to give myself a pep talk. There's no getting out of this. I've got to do it. So what I'm going to do is try and get as much speed leading up to the hill as possible. I'm going to lean my weight forward to give momentum for the wheelchair. I'm also going to push at the front of the wheels because that will give me the most power. Also, make sure that you don't let go of your wheels when you're going up a hill or lean back because that could cause you to tip out of your wheelchair. Leaning forward the whole time. It's very uneven here, so I'm making sure I'm going to pick the top parts of the camber. Again, I'm feeling where my wheelchair wants to go. I haven't had a few. We're we nearly there. Almost made it. We pretty much made it. And we're on to the next leg. Woohoo! Yeah, feeling good now. Woo! Because I do this journey so much, I've tried out each side of the road to see which one I think is best. And even though it's actually going to take me longer, the other side of the road is better than this side of the road. So let's go on with the next one. Right, beautiful path here. Looks nice and smooth, but don't let that fool you. It is in a sort of dome shape. So again, you need to pick that sweet spot at the top of the dome so that you're neither going one way nor the other, 
you're nicely at the top and you're nicely balanced. So I'm wheeling with even power on each side. So nice fluid pushes, conserve all that energy while you can. Nice and even that is Jim. Oh. Right? That's a dream, it That's really a is a dream. The pavement now has changed texture, so it's very gravelly and uneven. It's causing lots of vibrations. This arm is still, whoa, this arm is still working pretty hard. Feeling a bit hot. And I've got hypermobility in my thumbs. So where I've been wheeling on this side for so long, my thumb is starting to hurt as well. The final leg is going to be very narrow. We've got bins and we've also got roadworks to contend with. So let's just see how it goes. Let's close our eyes and hope for the best. Should we just go for this it? This is going to be pretty tricky. Yeah, but we're just going to go for it. So we've got this here, which is probably covering like a manhole or something. So I'm going to do a wheelie over this. but it makes a whole lot of difference. Still got a few things to contend with, like tree roots, uneven ground, but that does feel good. So we've got a cut curb here. Looking ahead, I can see which point I think is gonna be best and which point is gonna be worst. Obviously, I don't wanna go to that side of the cut curb because it is higher and there's lots and lots of mud. Whereas this little area of the cut curb, just here where the drain is, is a lot shallower, so I'm gonna pick that line, be committed, and go up this way. Here we've got tree roots, or we've got grass and thick, oozy mud, so I don't really have much of a choice here, so I'm gonna go for the tree roots. Jim. Yeah? I'll give you 10 bucks if you can get across there. It's not worth it, I'll do it for a hundred. <laughs> even have 10 bucks. All right, there's someone coming. Look, here's a prime example where we need to get out of the way so that people can use the cut curb. So if you are talking or you're checking your phone, try not do it in front of the cut curb so people crossing the road with prams, scooters, wheelchairs can get up safely. Now this part of the journey, I absolutely hate going round a corner we've got camber on the road and it's slightly uphill and at this point of the journey I'm quite tired I just hate this bit but I've got to be committed I've got to do this There's no other option so here we go looking ahead I can see a little bit of a cut curb so what I'm going to do it looks a lot easier and smoother in the road this is where I'm going to transition into the road when it's safe to do so
in the road, you can see how much smoother this is for me now. But obviously you've got to have your wits about you, be aware of cars. And obviously I wouldn't do this in a busy main road. I'm literally doing this because it's a quiet back road, which doesn't get an awful lot of traffic. All right, we're back at where we started. I'm feeling a little bit foggy, but I'm feeling good that I've gone out and got some fresh air. I hope this video has been useful and you've picked up some tips. Do let me know if you've got any tips down below. And if you've got any video suggestions, then please be sure to drop them down below. Don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Bye.